Hello, today's lecture is on the human muscular system. There are three types of muscle tissue in humans, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac muscle. Skeletal muscle is used for voluntary movement. Skeletal muscle is attached to bone and use the bones as lever, levers to cause movement. The cells in skeletal muscles are very large and those cells show many nuclei per cell. The other way that you can tell it is skeletal muscle on top of the many nucleus, nuclei per cells is that skeletal muscles show striping, light and dark bands. Another type of muscle is smooth muscle. Smooth muscle is one of the two types of involuntary muscles found in the human body. Smooth muscles are used in a wide variety of functions, including controlling digestion and controlling the amount of blood flow to areas in your body. Some of the characteristics of smooth muscle cells include spindle-shaped cells that have one nucleus per cell. Smooth muscles do not require nerves to function, so if a nerve that goes to a smooth muscle is cut, the smooth muscle will continue to function in the absence of that nerve. The other kind of involuntary muscle is cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle, as you can probably tell by the name, occurs in the heart. Cardiac muscle cells are unique in that they share traits with skeletal and smooth muscles. Like a skeletal muscle, they are banded. Like a smooth muscle, they have a single nuclei per cell and do not need nerves to function. Cardiac muscle is unique from both of them in that they have branches. Also, cardiac muscle will begin to beat on its own. It does not need nerves to create its own beat. All of the muscle contractions happen in a similar fashion. Muscles have two types of fibers, myosin, which is a thick protein, and actin, which is a thin protein. Contraction of a muscle occurs when the actin, the thin protein, slides along the myosin due to the formation of cross bridges. The formation of these cross bridges requires ATP. So muscle contraction requires energy, usually in the form of glucose. The control of muscular contraction occurs where nerves and muscles come together at the neuromuscular junction. The nerve releases acetylcholine, which is abbreviated capital A, capital C, H. Acetylcholine causes the muscles to contract. In the absence of acetylcholine, the cross bridges are destroyed and the muscle relaxes. If you were here for the lecture on the skeleton, you will know that a tendon is a connective tissue that connects muscle to bone and that bones are important because of they, act for, they act as levers for movement to occur. Now muscles can only contract, so every muscle is paired. For example, when you start with your hand relaxed, y your arm fully relaxed at your side, and you bend your arm upward at the elbow, the muscle that is contracting on the front of your upper arm is your bicep. When you straighten your arm back out again, the paired muscle to that is the tricep located on the back of your upper arm. I've forgotten I'd written in this example. Okay, so for example, your bicep pulls your forearm towards your shoulder when it's contracted, and the tricep pulls the forearm straight out when it's contracted. Now as you can imagine, it's very important to train your muscle in pairs, because if you train your bicep but don't train your tricep, over time the stronger bicep will contract more and the tricep will not be strong enough to extend the joint back to normal. And so over time, it will cause a bend in your elbow joint. Muscles require regular exercise to stay healthy. Muscles that you do not use will decrease in size. A decrease in size is called atrophy. When you strengthen your muscles, you put pressure on the bones. When you put pressure on the bones, the bones become thicker and stronger. Thank you for listening to this lecture today. I hope you have a wonderful day.